Hello, welcome to my latest video. This one's a bit sad because it's about an old friend of mine who died last Thursday, Stefan Kush, who was the lead singer of the, well, one of the two lead singers of the Men They Couldn't Hang, who I've known since 1984, maybe 83, um, who was a very funny guy, a very talented guy, and he'll be missed by everybody. And so we'll have the introduction and then we'll get straight into it after this. Right, so what is there to say? I first encountered Stefan Kush, known universally as Kush. I met him first when I used to put the pogues on at the Sir George Roby on a Wednesday residency that got so successful that we had to stop doing it because people overspilled the venue and couldn't get in and blocked the road. So the police stopped it. So that's a bit of a shame, but Stefan or Kush was the roadie for the pogues and He'd formed a band which which was with his um, busking partner, Phil Odgers, otherwise known as Swill, and other people who we'll no doubt mention later, who basically, I put them on a few times. I think he did one or two supports for the Pogues at the Roby, I can't remember, but I certainly put them on at the Cricketers over the years. They were all British born, but they had, um, they didn't have so much as an Irish influence as the Pogues, but they had a very folk influence. Like I can remember they did a fantastic version of Eric Bogle's Greenfields of France. And I can remember them doing a sound check at the Cricketers and Cush used to sing this almost a cappella with only the band like doing strums behind it and then building up to a climax. And it was really powerful. And I can remember one sound check at the Cricketers where the whole room fell silent. And even though it was just a sound check, they played this song. And at the end of it, everybody knew there were something special going on. So that was their first single, I think, The Men They Gunned Hang. They signed to Silvertone Records. They moved on. Um, we lost touch. They broke up not long afterwards, and that was that. But then they reformed, and I started putting them on again. And I remember putting them on at the 100 Club um, very successfully. They used to be a great band, they used to pull lots of people and um, everybody enjoyed their gigs and we worked together very well. And I remember doing a big show for them at the Electric Ballroom in Captain Town for their 30th anniversary, which would have been in 2004, because obviously they started in 1984, so 2004 sounds about right for the 30th. And I can remember that this is what Kush was like. I mean, he used to enjoy a drink and take the odd substances from time to well, the odd, I think, quite a lot. But he put everything into that band. I mean, he really, because I can re remember the electric ballroom. I was deep Jane, and he sat down with me, and we went through and we picked tracks to put on before the men they couldn't hang went on stage. And I, I can remember the one we chose what he chose really and it was a great choice to put on immediately before the men they come down on the stage was funky kingston by toots and the maytels which is not an obvious choice when you've got a punky folk band going on to put on a funky reggae track but it worked really well and it's worked it's just that he was really into the music and the vibes and everything and he'll be sorely missed uh, the last time we worked together was at margate with the gardens the Men They Couldn't Hang were the second headliners on the first night. I filmed him, I made a little chat and I filmed it and I will show a bit of that now. Hello everyone, and uh, it's great to be here in Margate, the Winter Gardens, and we're looking forward to this uh, wonderful this wonderful festival at uh, courtesy of Mr Jim Driver here, that I'm looking at, the one I closed, a winking. Anyway, peace and love to you all, and uh, hope it's a roaring success. That's last time I actually saw him, um, unfortunately, which was like, that was September last year, no, the previous year, so that was September of 2019. He'll be sorely missed, and I'm sure that all his fans will remember him and the band, and I know the band plan to carry on, and I wish them all the luck, and I'm sure that they'll make a very good go of it, because it's not, it wasn't just about Kosh, it was about the whole band and the whole vibe, and his vibe will live on, and I'm sure that um, Kosh, wherever he is now, He's looking down and having a fantastic time. So there you go, here's to Kush and I shall, well I've raised more than one glass to him since Thursday and I shall continue to do so. Because that was the kind of guy he was. He just made everybody like him and he was just a really, he, he, he was a very good 
musician and a very good performer and a very good friend. And there you go. This is the hymn. So, if you enjoyed this, I do post, this is an unusual one from me. I don't often do it about people who've just died because I tend to think that death is overblown because I'm a great believer in reincarnation or that it just goes and there's no point worrying about it when people die. There's nothing you can do, so just carry on. But this, I think, is a bit special. It's not just the fact he's dead, it's, it's to celebrate his life. And I tend to do stuff about music, about food, about writing, all sorts of things. So if you enjoyed this and you want to subscribe, that's always a great idea. You, you don't have to watch and enjoy all my videos if you don't want to, but please subscribe, press the notification bell, and also like this video if you liked it, and um, comment down below, let me know what you think. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching, goodbye. We're a big heavy river. So we ought to go and make a learn living and then a few tunes. I'll see the burning up, I reckon you get out of the